it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Apologies in advance, it's a little dimmer in this video. It's a very gloomy day outside and I only really have one window and it's over there. So over there is very, very dark. So for today's video, I actually thought it would be fun to do a Q&A. So I went over to my Instagram and just asked you guys to send in some questions. And here we are, so let's go ahead and dive right in. So I have all the questions up here for my Instagram. I did get the new iPhone, if anyone was curious. I do like it, the camera is pretty stellar, I won't lie to you. So for this video, I am trying to answer kind of facing the most popular questions. Um, some of these questions I have answered before, but obviously I'm happy to answer them again. But let's just dive right in. So. Starting first and foremost, I love people asking what I'm currently reading and to answer that I'm reading a book that's very much coordinating with what I'm wearing and it is Fireborn, which uh, I would say about halfway through right now and I'm actually really liking it. It's a fantasy that's sitting around dragons and it kind of has like a Russian revolution origin, if you will. There was this one really aristocratic regime that was really oppressive. The people rose up, kind of overthrew them in a very violent uh, revolution. Now there's kind of this everyone is equal and organized by like labor and what they can bring to the state kind of scenario. And our main characters grew up together in an orphanage and they're both auditioning uh, to be a fireborn, which is basically like a very powerful military figure and they ride dragons. So all those things combined have actually made a really unique book so far. I really like the POVs. I'm really intrigued by the world, lots of politics, so I'm excited to see how this book unfurls further. So that is what I'm currently reading. I would say the majority of the questions that are around kind of a few main topics, New York City and my thoughts about it so far, what I do for a living and what I studied in school and kind of how the job process for me was post school, uh, Clay's job and just kind of like my future goals and plans for myself, which, you know, I appreciate you guys asking me that. Those are some really thoughtful questions. So. Diving right in, uh, starting first, I guess we'll start with what I do for a living. So in college, I studied um, communications. I got a Bachelor of Science degree in advertising, actually, and I also got a Bachelor of Arts degree in history. Just two different passions of mine. I didn't want to pick, so I just did both. And I actually work in the city in marketing. So I work a full-time job as well as doing YouTube and Instagram or anything else on the side. I work about nine to six every day. I have actually asked on Instagram if you guys would be interested in kind of a work week in my lifestyle vlog where I like very honestly show what it's like to work full time in New York City and then also do things like YouTube and other stuff like that on the side as well as trying to fit in reading. Um, so I got a lot of positive feedback about that on my Instagram, but of course, please let me know down below if that would be interesting for you guys because obviously I would be putting it on YouTube and I imagine a lot of you guys are the same people, but just in case you're not, I just wanna, you know, confirm. I wanna just check with everybody before I do something new. So yeah, I do, I work at a marketing agency, I work for a specific client, and I do uh, kind of like data and analysis and advertising type of buying for them, it's a lot of strategy, a lot of Excel, a lot of, uh, kind of left brain activities. That's why I kind of really love to do YouTube and things like that because it's a lot more right brain activities. And there's a lot of interesting places where both of my skill sets and both places intersect. Um, and it's really fun in that way. Like I honestly love looking at my YouTube analytics and things like that and making my own optimizations, if you will, based off that information. Um, but yeah, so that's what I do nine to six every day. And then that is what I studied in school. So there's definitely some correlation there. And then you can probably see why I would love like historical fiction so much because I did study history in college. Specifically, I loved British financial history, a little dry, but I was a big fan. And then Russian history as well. So that is why I love historical fantasy and historical fiction um, so much. Quick note on Clay. I won't spend too much time on that because he's not here to really speak for himself. But basically, uh, Clay studied business in college and he works in finance. It's a really intense job that he has. It includes lots of long hours, but it's something that he personally had a really big goal and wanted to try for himself and kind of throw himself at. So I'm really proud of him. He's happy. He's obviously tired often, but generally speaking, he, it's something that he's like always curious to see if he could do. And so he moved to New York city. We're like pursuing that big finance dreams and I'm pursuing my big marketing dreams. And you know, here we are. We're just basically 20 somethings trying to figure out what the heck it means to have a career and set ourselves up for like the rest of our life, which is a scary thought to have, but you know, we're trying our best. This kind of leads into another main section, which is New York City in general, or my thoughts and feelings about moving here, living here. I've now officially lived here for a year. Um, I would say New York has surprised me in a lot of ways. I was really intimidated by the city for a long time. I was really scared to move here. I thought it would be 
too big and too you know crowded and you wouldn't be able to find any peace and quiet i would say in some ways yes that's true there are super crowded places but not everyone lives in for example times square like times square is mayhem personified but that's only a section of the city. Like New York is cool because there's so many distinct neighborhoods and vibes. So depending on what you're looking for, you can very much find a place that's like perfect for you. And for me, I love and Clay loves kind of like a quieter neighborhood, but we love to still be close to all the action. So we can kind of have that separation, but still very easily get to kind of the hustle and bustle or maybe where like all of our friends like to go out and stuff like that. Um, we do live in Brooklyn, which is awesome. Uh, I think it's really cute and charming and where we live in Brooklyn is really convenient to get to the city. Um, but that's nothing against Manhattan either. We probably will one day move to Manhattan just to try a new neighborhood out despite how much we do love our current neighborhood. We're, you know, wanting to try maybe something new, uh, you know, just to get another neighborhood off our off the list, add it to our own repertoire of living. <laughs> Aside from that, other really cool things about New York City is simply that there's just always something going on. It's huge and full of so many different people from different places. So there's always like a festival, there's a million restaurants to eat. If you want to eat like five star dining at three in the morning, you can do that here. It's like it, it, it really, things really don't close down. It's, I wouldn't say it never sleeps, but it's at least open till 4 a.m. every night, give or take. Um, you have great bodegas and great local sandwich guys. It's just essentially endless opportunity and options um, to try and to do. It can be almost, again, overwhelming because there's just so many places to go see and to go eat. But I would say Clay and I have been really trying uh, and have been pretty good about going to all like the touristy places that I feel like people put off once you move to a place because you're like, oh, we can do it anytime. But we try to do you know, touristy places in and around the city, so going upstate or like in the city itself to uh, just make sure we're seeing everything because we don't know how long we're gonna live in New York City. The flip side, I would say the more frustrating things about New York City besides the obvious, which is price, things are pricier here. Rent is pricey, food is pricey, transport is pricey. Uh, but besides all of that sort of like obvious downsides of New York City, I think something that definitely surprised me when I moved here is in my head growing up in the suburbs of Texas, I was like, wow, public transit, like it's so quick, you can go wherever you want. And yes, in a lot of ways, public transit here is awesome. You really can get wherever you want, but New York is deceptively big and small at the same time. Like something can be four miles away. Like you can go from Brooklyn to like the way Upper West Side and you're like, it's only four miles away, but it'll take you 50 minutes to get there by train. So like things are deceptively much further apart, even within the city than you realize. And if things aren't like near a good train, you'll be transferring a bunch of time. Essentially what I'm just trying to say, it does take longer. So being near trains, I would say if you're wanting to move to the city, check public transit over like a million times wherever you're working, wherever you're living, make sure it has a good route because you're gonna be spending so much of your life crammed on a tiny train car and making that ride as enjoyable and as quick as you can, for me, is pretty key. <laughs> then last New York related question I got a bunch was how long do I see myself living here? Obviously you can only plan life so far and ahead in the future, but I would say Clay and I kind of moved here with the general plan of expecting to be here three or four years. We both have certain like career goals we're interested in trying to achieve before we ultimately move back to likely Austin, Texas, which is another city we love. Um, New York is really cool. We kind of want to make sure we're giving it the best and fair shot we can until we kind of reach that point where we like don't want to live in 700 square feet anymore and would like more space and a second dog, which we cannot really get here realistically, at least in our price range. I mean, if you're like a brillionaire, you can live whatever kind of life you want in New York City, but we're not those people. So I think realistically, three to four years total will be how long we live here. But again, who knows what's gonna happen? That could change. You know, we lived in Chicago for one year, which was definitely not the plan. So things come up all the time, but I would say that's generally what we're planning to do. Someone asked me if I prefer YouTube or Instagram, which I think is a really interesting question. I think I enjoy them for different reasons. YouTube is so special for me because this is where I started. I also feel like it sprung from a place of passion and that I just loved books. I didn't have a lot of people in my life to chat the books I loved with, so YouTube to me is so much yes, making content, but also so much about community and connecting. I've made so many friends just like reading and con connecting with you guys in comments about books is just something I love so much and I just can't see my life without it. Instagram's fun because I also love fashion and I like the imagery side of it, but I feel like the connections I have on YouTube are just 
maybe deeper than that, but like Instagram as a platform of expression, I do think is really, really fun. And I really like challenging um, myself to create certain images. Instagram is also something that Clay and I kind of do together. Clay takes all of my Instagram photos. So it's fun to collaborate with him. And he and I work together to think of like new and different ideas to like go around the city and shoot stuff. So in that way, Instagram is great because it's more collaborative versus YouTube is kind of just me and this camera here until obviously the video goes live and then it's all of us. But in the actual making of it, it's just, it's just me. Hey, ask me how come I enjoy fantasy so much? That's kind of a hard question to answer, but I think it comes down to a few things. And I think it first stems in just as a kid, I had the most active imagination. I always just wanted to be in some sort of magical other world. I was always just like, playing in the woods with like sticks and pretending like I was a mage or knight or anything like that. Like since for as long as I can remember my brother and myself, like that is the magical imaginary games we would play. And it would always have something to do with like a fantasy setting, like a medieval fantasy setting. And I think in a lot of ways, my love of a fantastical world inspired my love of history because that's kind of the closest real life connection, like medieval history, early modern history. I always associate that to like, fantasy. I think the setting and the creativity and the wonder of fantasy is so lovely. And I think for me too, reading is a pastime that I love and it is a way to escape. And I don't mean that in like a, a weird way, but I just love c consuming media of any kind, like movies and TV shows and books that just have this like ultra alternative reality. And it's just fun and transportive. And I think I've always just felt that way even when I was a kid, like my favorite books growing up are fantasy. And it's just always been something that's been with me. And I just love the idea of going to a new world and like finding out new people and new history and new lore. Like it's all just new, you know? Like our world can be boring or scary sometimes. So like a new exciting fantasy world is just, just the tops. I got a lot of questions about travel and a country that I would love to visit. There's so many. Clay and I really like to travel, but I think number one on my list would probably be Japan. But from a European perspective, I also really would love to go to Italy. I haven't really spent or been to very many places in Italy at all, and I just feel like the pasta and the history, I just gotta see it for myself. Uh, Greece has also been a place that I might visit with my friend. I don't know, there's so many places I wanna go to, it's really hard to narrow down, but I would say those are my top three. Someone asked me how I got into Survivor, and it was actually one of you guys. Someone commented on one of my favorites videos about the challenge and how much they love the challenge and how they also also loved Survivor. And I had seen some other CBS reality TV shows in the past, specifically The Amazing Race, but I was like, oh, Survivor, there's so many seasons and I just didn't really think it was for me. But then when someone said that they loved the challenge and Survivor, I was like, well, that sounds like me. I should give it a try. And here I am, two and a half years later, I've seen like all the seasons, there's like 40 of them. And now I just rewatch them in my spare time because that is the kind of person I am. And I'm just obsessed with Jeff Probst and Survivor. And would I ever be in Survivor? No, because I would be bad and sunburned all the time and I don't think I could handle it, which is another reason why I respect Survivor because it really takes someone like, it's a hard, it's a hard show to be on. I have no interest in in being sunburned all the time. Someone asks, is it difficult to balance a nine to five job in YouTube? And the answer truthfully is sometimes. I get overwhelmed sometimes and it has nothing to do with anyone but myself because it's like all based on the expectations I'm putting on myself in terms of deadlines or what I want to produce at what time. And something I've been trying to get better at is being nicer to myself. Like if a video I wanted to get up on Tuesday goes up on Wednesday instead, like it's not the end of the world. Like I cannot, like tear myself down so much because I had to work late. I just don't have enough time to edit. And like sometimes life happens and I think allowing myself to be more flexible with myself and more forgiving to myself when it comes to my schedule. And this is with anything, not just YouTube necessarily, but just in life, like unexpected things are gonna happen. And I'm just trying to be nicer to me because <laughs> I am the hardest on myself, I think. And I think that impacts a lot of different things. Um, and you know, impacts my stress and anxiety in different ways as well. So that's something I've been working on. Um, so I guess truthfully the answer is sometimes, but it's no one's fault but myself. <laughs> Go to coffee order, either just a drip coffee with milk. I love drip coffee. It's like a new thing I've like this past year that I've just grown a huge appreciation for or a vanilla latte. It's always good. It's always delicious. Someone asked for an unpopular bookish opinion. 
Um, I guess I just don't love John Green books, which I don't know if it's so unpopular anymore. I feel like a lot of people have said things like this, so I'm not that unique in that way. But another question I've gotten a lot is like, is there a genre I wish I read more? And I think literary fiction, contemporary literary fiction is that genre. I read a lot of historical fiction and obviously a lot of fantasy. Uh, regularly, but contemporary literary fiction, especially if it's sad, it's just something I rarely push myself because I just don't want to be sad by like real life books. Like I carry that with me around, you know? Like I, it will just, I'll think about it all the time, so I put those books off. But at the same time, so many of my favorite books are that type of genre when I do push myself to read it. So I wish I read more, but like also, there's a fire truck. So, what he said. And the very last question I'll end this on, I got this probably the most, and it's, when are Clay and I getting married? And guys, I love you, but I'm not gonna tell you that. <laughs> That's none of your business. <laughs> but when, where, when and how, if it happens, we'll let you know. But for now, I have no idea. I'm honestly just excited when I can like get to work on time. You know what I mean? Alrighty guys, that is my q and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm definitely going to use that marriage question as clickbait, so apologies in advance, and I'll see you guys soon with another video soon. Goodbye!